What's up guys, I am super stoked because tomorrow morning, nice and early, I'm getting on a plane and flying to Utah for my very first 100 mile through hike. But before I go, I have to show you all the gear I'll be taking. So right here on the table in front of me is everything I will be putting in my pack and carrying on my back for 100 miles through the Uinta wilderness. I'll show you everything I'm taking and tell you why. Let's just jump right into it and start with the pack. The pack I'll be taking was chosen very specifically with this hike in mind because there is one extremely long water carry early on and we aren't doing any resupply points, which means I have to carry all of my food and up to five liters of water. I need a pack that's light and also one that can handle quite a bit of weight. For that, I have the Z-Pax Arc Haul. This pack is awesome. I picked it up from Z-Pax and I've used it on a couple of trips so far, but have really been looking forward to using it on this upcoming 100 mile trip through the winter wilderness. It's a huge pack. It will fit all of my gear. I'll mention three things in addition to the pack itself that are going with me. First is a rain cover. This is just a cheap nylon rain cover from Amazon. Cost me about 10 bucks, but it should do the trick when we deal with some rain on a few days on our trip. The next thing I'll mention is a hip belt pocket. This pack does not come with hip belt pockets and the ones that Z-Pack sells are just a little bit too expensive for me. So I picked this one off of Amazon. It will hold everything I usually keep in my hip belt pockets. And the last thing I'll mention with the pack is compactor bags. I'm taking one compactor bag to make sure everything in my pack stays dry because we are definitely going to be hitting some rain. So that's the pack. Let's talk about tent and then sleep system. The tent I'll be using on this trip is the Lanshan One Pro. It's super light, really affordable. I think it's about 26 ounces with the stakes and packs down super small. For my sleep system, I'll be taking as my sleeping pad the Trekology UL80. I've mentioned this in several videos. It's a little heavy at 26 ounces, but it is super affordable and even more comfortable. I love this sleeping pad. For my quilt, I'm taking my Hammock Gear Econ Burl 40 degree quilt. This quilt is amazing. If you have not checked out Hammock Gear quilts, you definitely should. For my pillows, for those of you that watched my last video, you know that my preferred pillows are the Gear Doctors inflatable pillow but not alone because that's just not quite comfortable enough for me. I'll also be taking the Teton Sports Camp Pillow. This combination makes for an excellent night's sleep anywhere in the backcountry. What we'll need along with our tent is some trekking poles and we'll be doing some serious elevation gain on this hike, so trekking poles are recommended anyway. My trekking poles are the Cascade Mountain Carbon. You can pick two of these up for about 50 bucks and we're really gonna put them to the test on this trip. Next, let's talk about cook kit. I am taking my Tokes Titanium 750 milliliter pot as well as my BRS backpacking stove and two lighters. So those are going here. I am not taking a fuel canister with me on the plane because you cannot fly with those, but we'll be picking those up in Utah before we hit the trail. Along with my pot, I have this cool little rubber band from Garage Grown Gear. It holds the pot closed so that nothing falls out while it's in my pack. My spoon, if I can reach it, I can't reach it, is the Tokes Titanium Long Handled Spoon. For water, I'm taking my Sawyer Squeeze as well as a platypus bag just because we have that one day with a long carry and two smart water bottles. Of course, can't go on a backpacking trip without my pocket knife. There you go, nothing special there. My favorite headlamp, this is a Phoenix headlamp. I can't remember what the exact model number is. I'll put the links to everything in the description, but this has a super long battery life and can be really, really bright or just run for a long time. I usually run it on the medium mode, really bright, lasts forever, and it's rechargeable with a USB-C. I love this headlamp. I've done a few videos on how you can make your own first aid kit. This is my DIY first aid kit. It has everything in it that I know that I'll need. I added a few extra things since this trip is so long, some extra medications, an entire roll of athletic tape. If you wanna see more about what's in this, I'll put a link to that video in the video description down below. You of course can't go 10 days in the back country without pooping, so the trusty poop kit, I'm taking the shovel, enough toilet paper, hopefully, as well as some wipes. I'm also taking some things so that I can actually take a little bit of a bath or a shower or just clean up halfway through the trip. I've got some powdered soap here. Also got that from Garage Grown Gear. Uh, this Dyneema bowl, also from Garage Grown Gear with donuts on it. Super lightweight, I can put a little bit of water in that and then take it somewhere away from the water source so that it's safe to use this soap without impacting the pH level of the local lake. And then just a Swedish washcloth because these work great for baths and showers in the backcountry. A few other quick personal items. We are going to have some serious sun exposure, so I am taking some regular sunblock as well as a sunblock stick. Also some hand sanitizer, gotta stay clean. And garage grown gear threw in this free ultralight toothbrush when I ordered all those other items, so 
thought I'd give it a shot. Some squirrel's nut butter to make sure that no chafing occurs. And of course my cork massage ball. I love this thing. It keeps the feet feeling good and ready for the next day. Now, this is just a little ditty bag. It has beard comb, a couple supplements, some hair ties, and my toothpaste tabs. The mosquitoes could be bad this time of year, so I'm also taking a mosquito net. Of course, taking some sunglasses as well. Let's talk about electronics because I am taking a lot and probably more than most people. So I'll talk about what I'm taking that's fairly standard and then what I'm also taking to make sure that I can record this fantastic backpacking trip and share some great videos with you guys when I get back. The first thing I'll mention is I'm taking my Garmin InReach Mini. This is so I can stay connected with my wife while I'm in the backcountry. And as we all know, it comes with the SOS button just in case the unthinkable happens. I'm taking a few charge cords. This is actually a triple charge cord. It has an Apple micro USB and a USB-C all in one, and you can use all three of them at the same time. Also taking some earbuds so I can listen to some books or music sometimes, and then a charge cord for my Garmin. I'm hoping that my Garmin can last the entire trip, but I just don't know, so I'm taking the charge cord just in case. With charge cords, we need power, so I'm actually taking three 10,000 milliamp power banks. The first one is actually the lightest power bank on the market. It's from Nightcore. They sent it to me so that I could test it out and do a review. It is expensive at about 60 or $70, but it is also definitely light. I'm looking forward to trying it out. And then I have these two anchor batteries because they are much more affordable at just $20 a piece and have the same power as this one. And they're actually only about one ounce heavier than this one. So, but taking three 10,000 milliamp power banks. Also taking my GoPro. Of course, various SD cards and extra battery for my GoPro. This is a cool little electronic device from Thermaworks. It's just a little thermometer where it will record the high and low temperature of any day. And then of course the current temperature at that time. I just like taking this to see what the temperature is and then even leave out at night to see how cold it gets during the night. I will also be taking a nice camera so that I can get some good footage and pictures, hopefully. It's the camera I'm recording on now so you can't see it. Along with that, I'm taking a microphone and an, a lens cover. And then two tripods, I know, probably overkill, but um, a big one that can handle the big camera as well as a gorilla pod. And I believe that's all the electronics I'll be taking other than my phone, which is what I'll be using for my main source of navigation. I've already downloaded the route on all trails and that's what I'll be using to help me navigate through this trail. Let's talk about luxury items. You probably noticed in the thumbnail or most likely didn't, but this is a Helinox Chair Zero. I think that's what they call it. Super light chair. I know it's crazy to take a chair. It's an extra pound for 100 miles but I'm going with some friends and we just want to be able to hang out at night in camp and not have to lay in our tents or potentially sit on the wet ground. So we're taking chairs. I will also be taking some camp shoes. I've never taken camp shoes before, but I've never been on a trip this long with this many miles before. And these camp shoes are a little bit unique because they're not actually made to be camp shoes. They're made to be trail running sandals. I got them from this super cool company called Paisley Running Sandals run out of Boulder, Colorado, I think somewhere in Colorado. You take an outline of your foot, send it to this guy, and he makes custom sandals based on just your feet. You can tell by looking at those that I have pretty fat feet. I think these are gonna be super comfortable after long days of hiking, and I may even try doing some backpacking with these on on one of the shorter days. We'll see though. Other luxury items are something to read. This is my pocket New Testament, and then just a little journal to write in during this trip. So that is all of the gear and electronics. Let's talk really quick about what I will be wearing. First, what I'll be wearing when we start the hike, and then I'll go through extra clothes that I'm taking as well. I will be wearing my trusty old Wrangler hiking pants. These were $23 from Walmart. They have lasted forever. They are super comfortable, super lightweight, dry really fast, work well in the winter. I love these pants. So of course that's what I'm wearing. And I got a new sun hoodie. The one I was wearing before is completely synthetic and it stinks. So I decided to try out a little bit more expensive sun hoodie. This one is from Eastern Sierra Ridge Merino. I'm really excited to wear this for 10 days and hopefully it is as odor resistant as they say. I will be wearing some Injinji toe socks. That's what I like to hike in and I forgot to bring them down but the shoes I'll be wearing are my Olympus 4s. They've got a ton of cushioning on them, a great grippy outsole with that Vibram Mega Grip outsole. They should work great for a 100 mile backpacking trip. As far as 
these extra clothes, I am taking an extra pair of socks, some lightweight gloves. I am going to take just a pretty light pair of shorts as well as a super lightweight t-shirt and an extra pair of undies because you know 10 days backpacking, I'm gonna have to wash the pair I'm wearing. For jackets, I am taking my Frog Togs Ultralight Rain Jacket. I just refreshed the waterproofing on it with Nick Wax Tech Wash and it should be super waterproof. I'm also taking my puffy coat. It's supposed to get down to 40 degrees at night. So this will probably be nice to have around camp. And that is all of the gear that I'm taking. I am going to pack this all up. All right, we've got it all packed up now. Let's see how much it weighs without food or water. 9.54 kilograms, 21 pounds. Ooh, that doesn't have my camera on it though. That weighs almost two pounds. <laughs> and then we gotta add the food, which is gonna add at least 12 and a half pounds. Whew. All right, it's gonna be heavy, but it's gonna get a pound lighter every day because of the food. That's what I gotta keep telling myself. Remember, life is better with some dirt in it.